Hey everyone, welcome back. So I'm showing you the end result of today's video. We're going to be shaping your dogs to put their toys back in their toy bin. Now, this is a little bit of a step up in terms of the shaping exercises that we've been talking about here on my channel. If you did not see my last video, I would recommend going back and watching that one first. I'm gonna tag it up in the corner here for you to click on, but that one will explain kind of the very simplistic starting points that I'm going to skip over a little bit more in this video and get to the more juicy, fun stuff. So let's jump right into how we're gonna start this trick. Okay, first things first, I would pick a toy that your dog is going to like and be interested in. Not one that they're going to fixate on. I know some dogs that when they see that one specific toy that they really, really like, they can't take their focus off of it. That's not the toy I would choose for this one. Something novel, you can go with something they haven't seen before, but I'd make it easy. Don't make it a heavy toy or something difficult for them to pick up. Here, I have a novel toy for Wrigley. She has not really been trained to do anything with this toy she but it's also not left out for her to play with either so that was kind of a, a challenge that I chose for her something like the little lamb that you guys saw at the beginning of the video it's light it's very very small easy for her to fit in her mouth that's something I would recommend starting out with now here I am going through the exact same steps as in that first video that I posted a couple weeks back I'm just clicking and treating Wrigley for engaging with the toy if she touches it if she knows is at it. Any engagement with the toy earns a click and a treat. Okay, the next goal for this is to actually shape your dog to open their mouth slightly around the toy. Now, Wrigley for this step, I chose to pick the toy up off of the ground. She has been so highly reinforced when something is on the ground that she's supposed to nose it or paw at it. To help her out and to further speed along the process, I decided to pick the toy up to help her a little bit. So initially, I'm just clicking and treating her for engaging with it for a couple repetitions, but I'm very quickly fading off of that. That. And here you're starting to see me not click and treat her for nosing it. She actually starts to nose a little bit harder, like, hey, that was working before. Why is it not working now? She offers that down. And then finally that mouth open just a tad. I'm not looking for a full mouth open at this point. Just a little bit of open mouth on the toy earns a click and a treat. Next step, putting the toy back on the ground with the same criteria that I had when I was holding the toy. I just want her to put her mouth around the toy. Okay, this is fast forwarding a little bit. Next step to this is I do want her to lift the toy up a bit off of the ground. So I highly reinforced right there where she offered to lift the toy a little bit. It does not need to be a full dramatic lift of the toy off of the ground. I'm just looking for a little bit of that upward motion of the toy for right now. Another little tip, if your dog is struggling, I found it helpful to pick up the toy and place it back on the ground for each repetition. Kind of just focuses your dog in onto the object that you want them to pay attention to. This obviously we will fade out over time. All right, next step I'm shaping for is picking the toy all the way up off the ground. It cannot have contact with the ground because eventually she will need to pick it up and put it into a basket. So I'm working on only clicking and treating here for her picking it all the way up and extra treats if she picks it up pretty high. Here's where I'm starting to shape for the actual bringing the toy to the basket behavior. I'm not starting with the basket, I'm starting with a flat surface on the ground as a target zone. I want Wrigley to pick the toy up and bring the toy and drop it onto the mat that I have in front of me. When you are first starting this, I would start by putting the toy on the direct opposite side of you of the mat. Your dog is gonna be most likely to go grab the toy and spit it out right as they step forwards onto the mat to station themselves in front of you. Then you can start experimenting with putting it on different sides of the mat. When you were starting out treating for this behavior, I would treat directly on the mat itself to further reinforce your dog dropping the toy where the treats are going to appear. 
Here we're starting to add the basket in. I would choose a basket initially that is much lower to the ground than this one. However, you can choose whatever basket you would like. Just keep in mind that your dog does have to lift the toy up and over the basket to drop it in. One that's lower to the ground is gonna be much easier. Here, I'm going back to basics and starting to just hold the toy over the basket and I'm clicking when Wrigley grabs the toy to then cause her to drop the toy. Now, something important I'm gonna point out right here is where you are placing your reinforcement, the treats that come after the click. I initially was tossing the treats away, but that was actually causing Wrigley to drop the toy outside of the basket, which obviously was not our goal. So as soon as I started delivering her the treats directly over the basket, she started to drop the toy in the basket. So where you place your treats becomes very important in this process. Once your dog has a good handle on that step, I'm starting to move the toy a little bit outside of the basket. So she actually has to move forwards more to drop the toy into the basket. And each time I'm picking the toy up and resetting her with a find it treat just to back her up away from the toy and to allow me to reposition it for the next repetition. Once your dog is doing well with that, we're gonna start slowly shaping up the behavior of the toy being on the ground and Wrigley going to pick that toy up and lift it up over the basket and into it. Now, I'm gonna start by just holding the toy closer and closer to the ground, clicking now for when she lifts the toy up and drops it into the basket. The click comes when the toy hits the basket, not for when she grabs it this time. Now I'm even lower to the ground, click for when it hits the bottom of the basket, treat for that, and you can set up for the next repetition. Here I'm going to actually drop the toy on the ground fully and let go of it. I wanted to experiment and see what she would do with that and she did awesome with it. I'm gonna highly reward that and praise her for that. I wanted to take a couple seconds to show you guys that this type of training, shaping, does not come without frustration. This process that you guys are seeing me go through, I can't make this a 40 long video, a 40 long, a 40 minute long video. So I wanted to insert just a few clips to show you guys the frustration that I did see from Wrigley throughout the process. So here, a good rule of thumb, if your dog is looking at you, they are thinking. Wrigley tends to do this when she gets frustrated. She will stare at me for a very, very long period of time to the point where one might think maybe I should reset her. However, she will start to offer things again. So there you saw her lie down for a long period of time, but she was looking at me the entire time. I was looking at the toy, trying to get her refocused on the toy. As soon as she engaged with it again, that's when I chose to click. Here we were working on actually putting the toy into the basket and she was having a really hard time with this today. She was having a very hard training session. She, we had worked on it for a while at this point. I knew she had an expectation of what she was supposed to do, but she was not having it. She didn't want to offer that behavior. So here I just waited her out because she was looking at me and I started to slowly try to get that behavior back by clicking and treating her for simple, simple things. Now you're going to see her again start to go for the toy and then drop it and offer a sit and look at me and the lick clip from last week. So these are all frustration behaviors from your dog. They should not be behaviors that are ignored. Here, I decided here in a couple seconds to stop this training session and actually take a break and come back later. This is Wrigley trying to tell me I'm frustrated. I don't really want to continue doing this because I am just, I'm frustrated. So I would end your training training session, try to end it on a good note if possible, but if you're seeing these behaviors from your dog, um, whether it be they offer something else, they only kind of part way offer the behavior where you think that they know it pretty well at that point. Um, they offer a sit, the lip lick, any other tricks that you've taught them, that's a good indicator that you need to either make the training a little bit easier for them, take a couple steps back, or they really need a break.
All right, next step to this is generalizing this behavior onto a variety of toys. She clearly does not have one toy here, so I'm gonna teach her to do it with all of her toys. I'm gonna start with something though that looks similar to the toy that I started with, and I'm going back to basics in terms of holding the toy over the basket and requiring that she drop it over the basket. You're going to be able to speed this up a lot faster. This is the entire shaping session from start to finish that you guys are seeing right now. I didn't start this earlier with the rope toy at all. She's just getting it because it's the exact same setup that we were just working on, just with a different toy now. So I started with just making it easier for it first and then gradually working up to eventually putting that rope toy all the way on the ground like we were doing with that orange toy, requiring her to pick it up and place it down in the basket. And here I'm doing the exact same thing just with her tiny lamb toy now, clicking and treating just for her uh, actually trying to grab onto the toy and shaping that behavior up. Okay, we've reached the adding the cue part of this behavior. So I've gotten to the finalized completed behavior. Eventually, I would like to be able to just put the toys out a couple at a time, ask her to, my cue is going to be put it back. She goes to grab the toy and put the toy back. However, this is a really good point to add the cue. So you know your dog is going to go up to that toy and place it in the basket. All you're going to do is as they're walking up to the toy, cue, put it back. They're going to grab the toy, put it in the basket, click and give them a treat for that. I'm tossing the treats away to help reset for the next repetition at this point. It becomes a very seamless process. And then tossing out a variety of toys. So here I'm starting to get into the mix, the rope toy, and you'll see me use that original orange toy that we started with. And I'm just tossing those different toys out with the same requirement that she go pick them up on the queue, put it back, and place them back in the basket. So this is the final behavior for this video. I hope this was a fun one for you guys. I had a lot of fun teaching this to Wrigley. It involves a lot of steps, which I find really fun <laughs> in the shaping process when some final behavior involves multiple steps to it. So let me know if you guys have questions in the comment section below. Um, I've got a couple fun ideas coming out for you guys pretty soon. So stay tuned and happy training.